Welcome to lesson 5 of use case analysis. In lesson 4, we focused on a specific use case by entering its use case description. In this lesson, which is the final lesson, we will finish the use case description by entering the events flow of the use case. Okay, let's begin. This is the use case model we created before. We were working on the use case borrow box. I just opened its details. Right click on it and select Open Use Case Details from the pop up menu. We are going to describe the flow of events of this use case. So we just open this tab. Now, enter the steps involved in borrowing books. The first step the librarian scans the barcode on Patreon's ID card. In the second step, I want to describe how will the system respond to step 1. To indicate a system response, do this. Click on this button. Select System Response from the menu. And then I can enter the step. The system will display the patron's details. Note that you are supposed to describe the interactions between actor and the system. So I won't describe internal logic like to validate the ID or to look up the record from the database. OK, step 3. Here I want to represent that the librarian will perform some actions on each book to borrow. To represent this, we can use a for each loop. Let me insert the for each. Again, click on this button. Select for each. If you like, you may select while loop. For each book to borrow, the librarian will click on the button create a borrow record. I want to indicate that create a borrow record is the caption of a button. To do this, I can select the text and select bold. OK, the next step. Once I've clicked the button, the system will ask me to scan the barcode of the book. Again, I create a system response and describe the step. The next step is to scan the barcode on the back of the book. After that, the system will display a new row of borrow record. The librarian will click save to save the record. Again, save is a button, so I bold it. I've finished describing the flow of events that will occur under the book borrowing use case. The scenario written is what we call the main scenario. It represents the most typical way of completing a use case. Usually, it describes what will happen when everything goes right. The main scenario is good to begin with, as it's simple and easy to get. It gives stakeholders a base understanding before they can go further. Once the main scenario is identified, you need to consider the exceptional cases and any possible alternatives. Take book borrowing as example. If the maximum number of items a patron can borrow concurrently is 3, and a patron is trying to borrow 4 books, what will happen? What will happen when there is an unpaid fine? These kinds of situations have to be handled by the system. And in the flow of events editor, you can represent them by inserting extended flow. Let me show you how. Let's say if the system won't allow a patron to borrow more than three books. In step 3.1, the librarian click on create a borrow record button. If it's found that the patron has already borrowed three books, the system will display a warning. So I click on step 3.2 and click this button, select extension to insert an extended flow there. I'm brought to the extension pane. I just describe the condition that triggers the extended flow. Exit three book loans. What will happen? The system will prompt this patron has three non-returning books unable to borrow anymore. That's it. The system will also disallow a patron to borrow books when there is unpaid fine. Let's insert another extension. This time I enter unsettled fine as extension point. And the system will respond by prompting unable to borrow book when there is an unsettled fine. Alright, I've finished describing the events flow of the use case. Besides describing the flow of events by text, you can also make use of wireframes in representing how the user will interact with the system. Will a command be triggered by a button or a menu? 
What's the approximate layout of widgets? All these can be expressed with wireframes. By integrating wireframes with the events, stakeholders can reveal the flow of events along with the wireframes to ensure that requirements and objectives are met through the design. Let me show you how to create wireframes from within the events flow. First, click on the events where I want to insert a wireframe. Click on this green button to create a wireframe. Click on the pane. Depending on the type of device or platform that your system or software will run on, select a kind of wireframe here. The library management system is a web-based system, so I select website. Click on new website wireframe. This is the wireframe editor. I just rename the title of the browser first and make it smaller. Okay, I can start the screen mockup process. This step is about showing the patron's detail. I want the image of the patron to be displayed on the screen. I represent this with an image widget. Select image, drag it onto the wireframe. Resize it to smaller. I'll add a label to represent the name of the patron. Resize it. Another label, perhaps for describing the background detail of the patron. I will create a table for listing the borrow record. There are four columns in the table. The first one is for displaying the ISBN. The second one for displaying the date of borrowing. The third one, the due date. The final one, date of return. OK, I've finished. I just click this button to go back to the flow of events. As you can see, the wireframe is attached to step 2. The preview of the wireframe is shown here. I will just create another wireframe for step 3.1. The step suggests that there is a create a borrow record button. I will just draw this button. Again, I click on this pane. Instead of creating a new wireframe, I just reuse the previous one. Add a button here. Rename it to create a borrow record. That's it. Go back. The wireframe is presented. This step is about clicking on the button. To represent the action of a click, do this. Click this button. Select pointer. Drag the pointer to the button to represent a click action. Alright, draw another wireframe for step 3.4. Step 3.4 is about displaying a new row of borrow record. If I keep editing the previous wireframe, you can imagine it will affect the wireframe in step 2 because in step 2, it's supposed that the record doesn't exist yet. What I have to do now is to create a child state from the previous wireframe. I move my mouse pointer over the thumbnail of the wireframe and click on this button to create a child state. It looks identical to the previous wireframe, but it's a child state. I can make changes safely. The changes I make will not affect the previous wireframe. So I'll just add some labels in the table to represent the new record. Just add four labels. That's it. Go back to the flow of events. A wireframe is added. Finally, step 3.5, click Save. I will just reopen the previous wireframe and add a Save button there. Alright, I'll just go back. Again, I'll represent the click action by adding a pointer. Okay, I've finished adding all the wireframes. When you confirm the flow with the stakeholders, you might want to present the wireframe in a sequence, like a slideshow. You can play the wireframe in this way. Let me show you. I click on the second step. On the right hand side, you see the preview of the wireframe. On top of the preview, there is a play button. Just click on it. Here is the slideshow of the wireframes added to the flow of events. 
to play the slides, click this button. Alright, remember in flow of events, we've inserted a for each loop. Here the slideshow player asks if you want to continue the loop or to exit from the loop. I want to continue, so I click yes. This is the second wireframe, representing the action to click on the create a borrow record button. And I move on to the third wireframe. In the third wireframe, a borrow record is inserted into the table. The next slide is to click the save button. If I click next again, it asks if I want to carry on with the next round of the loop. I don't want to continue now, so I just press escape to exit. Alright, these are how the flow of events, the wireframe and the slideshow works. Before I end this lesson, I want to show you how to touch up the use case model by adding extended and include use cases. Let me open the use case diagram. I was just editing the flow of events of the borrow box use case, and I've described two extended flow. I can represent the extended flow in this use case model. Let me show you how. From the borrow box use case, create an extended use case. Like this. I named the use case handle failed borrowing, three box loan. I enter the extension point, three box long. An extension point is a reference point in the behavior of the use case where that behavior can be extended by another use case. This extended use case represents one of the extended flow. Let me create another extended use case. Handle failed borrowing, unsettled fine. With extension point, unsettled fine. I'll just tidy up the diagram a little bit. I can make use of the sweeper tool to move a group of shapes towards a direction. I like the sweeper tool a lot because it's really useful. It provides a very convenient way to move a group of shapes. It's particularly useful in diagrams like sequence diagram and business process diagram. Alright, just go back to this use case model. Let's say the use cases reserve book update patron profile, download ebooks, and extend loan, or require the patron to log in. So login is a common behavior of these use cases. I can represent this with an included use case. Let me show you how to do this. Move the mouse pointer over the use case, drag out the resource catalog button, release the mouse button, create an include use case. Enter login as use case name. Connect the other use cases with the login use case. Of course, make sure you've selected include as relationship. Just tidy up the diagram. This is the final use case diagram. This is about the end of the whole use case analysis demonstration series. We started from identifying actors and use cases from problem statement. And then we formed a diagram with the actors and use cases. After that, we prioritized the use cases. We know which use case is more critical, more outstanding. We focused on one of the high priority use cases, which is borrow box. We described it in detail. Part of the use case description involves describing the events flow and drawing wireframes. Finally, we touched up the diagram by adding extended and included use cases. This is the end of the use case analysis video series. We hope you enjoyed the videos and got some ideas about how to perform use case analysis using Visual Paradigm. Thank you very much for watching the videos. Goodbye.